everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you how to make your own DIY vellum. This is a really easy process to do. I'm going to show you what you need, how to do it, and all different kinds of varieties. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing is first, you are going to need something to protect your desk, preferably something thicker. This is a messy process. You're using baby oil. So I am using like a thicker cardboard sheet. You can use a plastic sheeting that will protect your work surface, whatever you have, just something thicker to absorb that extra oil. You're also going to need baby oil and then something to spread it around with. I'm using cotton balls. You can use cotton pads, whatever you have. Okay, you're also going to need some kind of paper. Now you can do this with regular printer paper like I am doing here. This is gonna be your tried and true vellum that you end up with. So like I said, regular printer slash computer paper. Um, I believe this is like 30 pounds, very, very thin. Just your regular stuff you would print on in the office. Now what you wanna do is just take your baby oil and spread some around on your paper. You can instantly see it gets a glassy, like frosted glass look. Um, it's going to absorb only so much, so take that little bit of oil and spread it around with the cotton ball. You'll see it really starts to absorb right into those paper fibers. And after you get one cotton ball pretty soaked, you don't need to add a ton of oil if you're doing this to multiple sheets of paper. So just spread that around. You can see my backing paper is catching all of that excess off the side. And then you can see I've got this nice glossy surface. Once it's absorbed, all it's going to absorb, it's time to start blotting it. There is going to be some excess oil in spots that sits on top of the paper. So what I like to do is then take a paper towel and just wipe it down. You can do this pretty roughly, just really go after it. It's not going to absorb any of the oil that's already in the paper fibers. It's just gonna absorb what's on top. So I do that to one side and then I flip it over and do it to the other side as well because it's soaked all the way through the paper. So make sure you do both sides and just give it a really good wipe down. It's still gonna be a little bit wet. Just sit it off to the side and let it dry for a few minutes. If you do use this right away, you just run the risk of transferring the oil to any other paper that it touches. So it will eventually dry, just let it sit for a second and then it's not gonna contaminate any other papers. So once it's done, you have this really see-through vellum-like paper. Uh, you can see directly through it. I held it up against this picture here. It creates a wonderful frosted glass look, just like a regular piece of vellum would. And then of course, comparing it to what it originally started out as, you can see how much it actually changes just by adding that little bit of baby oil. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a true test without also comparing it to a piece of vellum that you can buy in the store. Now, it's not identical. The vellum that you buy in a store is a little bit more uh, transparent, if you will, but it's a good dupe. If you are out of vellum or you can't get to the store right away and you just need one sheet, it's a great dupe, but if you are like me and you do other kinds of journaling or those kinds of things, this is so much fun to do with different kinds of paper. So I'm gonna run down with you through all the different kinds of papers I did this with. The first one being just some regular writing paper that your kids would use in school. This is a loose leaf paper, lined paper. It works wonderful. You're using the same exact technique. You will use the same exact technique throughout this whole video. I will not go over it a million times, but all you wanna do, spread your baby oil with a cotton ball and then blot it with paper towels. Make sure you're keeping that backing paper underneath to protect your work surface and make sure you probably have on old clothes because you might end up with some oil spots on yourself as well. But it just creates this wonderful vellum writing paper now. So it's not just used for your regular computer paper. You can do it with so many things. And it's going to create some very nice embellishments and some great see-through effects as well. 
Next up, I did it with some graph paper. This was torn out of a spiral bound notebook. I didn't even bother taking off the little pieces on the edge, but I did wanna make sure that none of these inks were going to bleed with the oil. All of them stayed put, this one as well. It creates this really lovely vellum graph paper then. This was one of my favorites. I love graph paper, I don't know why. I just think it's a really neat texture it creates. I absolutely adore this one. Um, I also held it up to some words just to make sure you could still read it. The black and white picture shows through pretty much everything, but I did wanna make sure you could pick up some text through it as well, and you definitely could with all of these. Very, very neat the way this one turned out. Again, gonna create some great texture in your journals. Now next up, I did it with just some legal pad paper. This one happens to be blue and it's a smaller one. This is from an Amazon Basics notepad. However, they come in a variety of colors. They come in pink, purple, yellow as your standard legal pad color. You can use it with any one of them. Just wanted to make sure the ink wouldn't bleed and that it stayed transparent, and it did. It worked perfectly just like the other ones. You can see through it, you can read through it, you can see pictures through it. It is absolutely gorgeous and a lot of fun to play around with. Especially considering that you can get these in so many different colors. Now next up, I am doing the same kind of paper. However, it is a little bit different in that I have coffee dyed this one. This is a white piece of paper that I have coffee dyed, and I, again, just wanted to be sure that the coffee wasn't gonna go anywhere using the same exact technique. You can see I'm not having to spread near as much baby oil as these cotton balls soak up the excess oil. You can just go right back in. Sometimes you don't even need to spread any if it's a smaller piece of paper. This one is one of my favorites too. It creates this really vintage look on top of your photos or text or anything like that. The coffee stays put, still creates those puddles. Gorgeous, gorgeous, the way this one turned out. And like I said, it still kept those, the puddling effect that I got. Um, even with it as light on this one, the coffee stain did not move in the fibers of the paper when you added oil. And I just did want to compare it quickly to one that was not treated with the baby oil, and you can see how much of a difference that makes just by holding it over the same image. The one on the right, you can really see through the transparency. The one on the left, again, pretty opaque. Now this one had some major puddling. This is composition notebook paper that I have coffee dyed and then sprinkled some grounds on top of to create that puddling effect. I wanted to see if it was going to move anywhere. And again, just test that ink in the composition notebook paper. Didn't move at all. It worked out wonderfully. This creates some really beautiful vintage effect. It almost creates a glass scene look, if you will, um, instead of the vellum. It does keep a little bit of the shine. It will dry off very slightly, but a little bit does stay behind. So you still keep that little bit of glass scene look, not quite as shiny, but it's still a pretty cool technique to use and very simple and easy. You don't have to use any sprays for this one or wear any uh, masks, if you will, or go outside and use your um, spray paint. So pretty cool technique that you can do quickly indoors without ventilation. And again, just a close up of that puddling so you can see all the different kind of looks you can get. I did want to give you a nice close up to make sure that you've seen the ink does stay put. Now next, I wanted to try it on some thicker paper. This is a sketchbook paper. It is not, I would say it's about 60 pounds. Um, I didn't have high hopes for this to be quite honest. This does absorb more oil. The thicker the paper, the more oil it is going to take and absorb obviously. Um, but I didn't think it would you create any sort of transparency. To my surprise, it did. It is much denser of a paper. Um, it is not as transparent as the other ones that I've created, but it is a really cool technique if you want a thicker paper. It still works. You're just going to get a less transparent version, if you will. Now next up, I have some linen blend paper. This is like a parchmenty paper. Um, this came in a pack with like greens and blues and taupes, different colors. 
Uh, it's kind of speckled in the middle, if you will. It has a green kind of speckling to it. I believe it is about 65 pounds. Slightly transparent once I added the baby oil. Um, not near as transparent as the other ones, but it did bring out that green to the forefront and really show the speckling that it had in the paper itself. So pretty cool nonetheless. Next, I wanted to try it on some patterned paper. Now patterned paper is slightly thicker when you use it. It is about 65 pounds normally. Um, the pattern paper wasn't my favorite. It didn't turn out the best in my opinion. The less design, the less concentration of ink on the paper, the better it turned out. Um, but the more ink it had closer together, the less it worked. So your white spaces on the paper, those are gonna show through really well. If it has a lot of white space, great. If it has a lot of black space or darker colors or any color, really it's not gonna show through. It creates very, very, very limited transparency. I honestly wouldn't waste my pattern paper with this technique. If you're going to create, if you want a vellum pattern paper, I would buy it. It really, it's a little bit more, you can see a little bit more through in real life than you can in the video, but it's still not enough where I would waste my pattern paper with this technique, to be quite honest. And I did use thicker pattern paper. Keep in mind that I used the thicker version. If you do use a thinner, lightweight pattern paper, it is going to show through more. Now this pink one probably turned out the best. It does have quite a bit of white space and it is double-sided pattern. So the pattern actually pokes through on both sides. You'll see as I hold it up. Again, these are thicker papers. They absorb more oil. So just put it on as needed. You can see the pattern did pop through on both sides. The one with the more white space, which would be the polka dots, you can see the pattern more on that side. But again, it pops through on both sides, so it's a nice ghosting technique. That's something different, but to see through it like you can with vellum, you're just not gonna get that with these pattern papers and the double-sided at that. So I did have high hopes for those, but unfortunately, they were kind of a bust. Now, something that was not a bust, book pages. I adore the way these turned out. I have tons of book pages. Um, and they are thinner pieces of paper, so they just absorb that oil right up and create such a transparent look. Here I'm using some, I think it's like a mechanics manual, If I think, I don't know. I just like the pictures in it. I picked it up at Goodwill, but this is only printed on one side. It created this gorgeous transparency that you can use over words or pictures. This next one is a little bit of a green colored paper. This is actually an engineering textbook, and this is kind of where you would do your sketches, like your assignments, if you will. A um, little bit thicker of a paper, but it did create a gorgeous transparent piece of paper once it was done. So not quite as thick as your 65 pounds. I would say it's about a maybe a 40 pound paper and it creates a really gorgeous effect as well. Now next up, I used some pages from another mechanics manual. The difference between this one and the first one is that this one has printing on both sides. So as I apply the oil, you're going to see the printing from the back start to pop through. It creates one of those ghosting looks. It's really neat. I love the way this turned out. Also, you can see this one has a little bit of aging on the edge of it. Adding that oil didn't remove any of it. It kept it right intact and it looks very cool. Now next up I have two book pages. One is quite aged, the other not so much, but they have printing on both sides. I added oil to each of them. They both turned out beautifully. The aging stayed intact. The brown color stayed intact. It This one is absolutely gorgeous. The smaller the text, the less ghosting you're going to get um, in that more condensed space. 
you can still see it through, but it almost like kind of cancels each other out on both sides. Now this one, you can see the text a little bit more where those open white areas are. Really cool technique with these book pages. Absolutely love the way these turned out. These would make excellent pockets. With all the text on them, you still get a little bit of um, kind of a hidden, if you will, hidden area. However, you can still see through it and it just creates this gorgeous effect. I did wanna give you a close up more of those words poking through. Now next up, I did an encyclopedia page. Now one half of this is text, the other half is more of a picture. I just wanted to see if it would work. It did, it turned out gorgeous, the ink stayed put. I really adore the way this one turned out. This would create some very, very cool patterns with pieces of art that are included in those old encyclopedias. Really, really neat technique with these. Now next up, I have a ton of printed ephemera and just different pieces of paper with numbers and things like that that I would normally use for journaling. These are all printed with a laser printer. I have no idea if this will work with an inkjet printer. I do not have one, I did not try it. These are all laser printed images and my ink stayed put. I started off with this old Crayola box. Uh, I trimmed this one out and just added a little bit of the oil onto it with the cotton ball and this turned out so cool. I love these little pieces. You can create so many little embellishments um, that you can print off for free, add a little oil, and you've got vellum embellishments for scents. And I love that you can literally turn any of your embellishments that you wanna print off into vellum. It's so cool. Next up, I have this little glass bottle. I thought that would be really cool um, to try it out. This one worked out beautifully too. Added the oil, just used a little paper towel to blot any of the excess off. And again, you can see right through it. It creates this really cool glass scene effect. Very, very cool. Love this little guy. Now again, great thing about printables, you can size them any which way you want. This bottle's really small, but you could make it really big if you wanted to. Next up, I did this vintage receipt. Again, turned out beautifully. Ink didn't go anywhere, didn't smudge, didn't come off on the cotton ball, didn't run. Any, nothing like that. You can see right through it. Very, very cool technique. Next up, I did it with this envelope. Again, same exact results, nothing budged. Just ended up with this really cool vellum embellishment. With all the free printables online, all the free images, all the open source images, the public domain, the options are literally endless with this. Next up, I did it with these tags, which I think is a great option. Um, I did do one more test to make this even cooler later on in the video. Um, I did a little bit of writing. You'll see how that turned out. Again, with the fragile tag. And then I also have these great sleigh images that I found in an old catalog. I made them a little bit smaller, printed them off, and now they're vellum. All I did was add oil, very, very cool. Okay, next up are images. This is pretty cool. Where the black is, you can't see through. However, that center, you can see right through. So it created almost um, an eyeglass effect, pretty cool. Next up with the little flea, I thought that was great. It created like a little slide effect. And then of course, this beautiful image. I love the way these ones turned out. They're pretty cool. They're some of my favorites. Uh, next, I did this big sheet of numbers that I created. This is actually one that I made just with trimming out numbers from here and there. I will leave this one for free up on my blog. Um, I just like to trim out numbers every now and then. You can use this as a whole sheet. You can cut it up however you want to. I'll leave it for free. The link will be down below. But again, add a little oil. Now you've got vellum numbers. Pretty cool. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that this was going to work like vellum. So I've got my just plain paper, computer paper that I did in the very beginning. First thing I wanted to do is make sure that you could cut it. It wasn't going to rip or cut funny. 
anything like that. The fibers weren't going to be weird with you once you added oil. I just used my knife, um, my X-Acto blade, worked beautifully. Uh, no problems cutting through it. It worked beautifully, cut beautifully, nothing, no problems. I also wanted to try ripping it to make sure you could still do that. Again, worked beautifully. I love the fibers peeking out in this so you can still see those fibers poking out. Um, I also sometimes like to crinkle up my vellum and it creates this lovely shattered effect. I wanted to see if that would still work on these pieces of homemade vellum. And so I crinkled up that little piece and then I'll pull it apart and it did. It created that almost baker's paper, parchment paper if you will. That kind of look, just that shattered look, really, really neat. Love doing this with regular vellum. Worked beautifully with this, and it still maintained its transparency. Next up, things we all love to do, add ink. So I wanted to make sure this was going to first accept ink, and then if you have it already inked, I wanted to make sure that the ink wasn't going to budge. So I first added um, Distress Inks. I used one blending brush and then I went directly from the pad. I also used an alcohol marker and this is already the pre-treated paper. So with the oil already on it, I wanted to make sure it was still going to accept these inks and not budge. I also used a gel pen. So this is actually going to sit more on top of the paper. Um, I gave it this just a little bit of time to dry. Now I'm gonna take a cotton ball that has nothing on it and really give it a rub. Now I let these dry maybe 10 seconds. So you can see I'm still getting a little bit of ink from the Distress Inks off. The alcohol marker really didn't budge and the gel ink didn't budge either. If you gave those inks a little bit more time to dry, I'm sure they would. I gave it about 10 seconds, a little bit did come off, but for the most part, they stayed put. Now I wanted to add the ink onto the paper and then treat it and see if the oil was going to move the inks around after they were already on the paper. So again, I used my Distress Ink, I put it on with a brush, and then directly from the pad for a more concentrated look. Then I'm also going to use my Versifying Clear Pad. This is more of a pigment ink, so it's gonna sit on top of the paper. Um, the Distress Inks are more of a dye ink. They soak into the fibers of the paper. I went back in with my alcohol marker as well, just to make sure that it was not going to budge. I added a very good helping of that onto the paper. Alcohol markers are similar to a dye ink. They really soak into the fibers of the paper. That's what makes them blendable. Next up, I used my gel pen. I added a little high, and then I also covered, colored in a nice big blotch so we could get a true test instead of just little lines. And then I also am going to add a little bit of pencil just to see how that would do with the oil. And then I'm also adding ballpoint pen. This is in a bright pink color. I just wanted to see if it was gonna move. I'm adding a nice big blotch of it. So that kind of covers our bases. Then I am just gonna soak it in oil. I put the oil directly onto those areas where I had put inks and all of the great stuff. Then I'm using my cotton ball to really rub it around. So far, I had just a little bit of ink move with the more concentrated area. The black ink as well, just a little bit, nothing, not a lot. Now, the alcohol marker, where I put that first stream of oil, it did move the ink out just a little bit, um, and you'll see it in the close-up. The gel pen did not move. The ballpoint pen moved just a little bit. The pencil completely disintegrated. If you have pencil on your paper and you add oil, it's going to go away. So just keep that in mind. For the most part though, this worked out pretty well. I mean, other than just a little bit of it coming up, it really didn't do a whole lot to it. So I would consider it a success. Um, just that little bit on the alcohol marker, that first stream, of the really concentrated area did separate that just a little bit, you can see. But other than that, everything stayed pretty well put, except for the pencil. 
So overall, I would consider it a huge success. You can still do all those fun things. You can coffee dye it. You can tea dye it. You can stain it with your inks. You can ink blend over it. You can write on it, rip it, cut it, all these different things. You can turn any piece of paper you want into vellum with some baby oil. Such a cool technique. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating all of these little things to show you. That is going to do it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget the freebie over on my blog. That link will be down in the description box below. Happy crafting.